Welcome back to Funnel Like Crossover. Let's pass it down to Mark, who's going to say what's up in the NBA. All right, let's go straight up to one of the legends having his jersey retired, Kobe Bryant, Monday against uh, the Golden State Warriors. Mm. He had his jersey retired during the halftime. Actually, both of his jersey was retired, number eight and the 24, uh, the 24 jersey that he mm -hmm. had. I want to hear what you guys have thoughts about, you know, just living, you know, looking back of all the things that you remember about watching Kobe play, everything about it. I want to hear your thoughts about it. Okay, the first thing that comes into my mind is he's a Raptor killer. Oh, 81 yes. points. What? The 81 point game. How are you going to score 81 points on the team that's in our town? <laughs> like, does, don't, don't Toronto play defense, but Kobe is I think Kobe. They, they put everyone on him that game, they right? They tried to put Jalen Rose on him, Mo Peterson, anybody that could play basketball in the team. But I, I, I wasn't there in the gym watching it. Where yeah. were you? Do you, like, you know what I'm saying? I don't think I watched the game. I wasn't watching it. I wasn't Where watching it. Shit, I was definitely not watching the game. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, after that game, everyone probably watched the rerun, you know? Because I know in YouTube, there was like a counter. There was oh, a counter how many of his points. points he scored. Yeah, so the, yeah. the one thing that I remember of Kobe is just that game. Because yeah. not only is he a big scorer, but he scores at the biggest games of his... Uh, like, for example, when he scores a lot for, for his last game, yeah. or when he scored a lot... 60 points. He scores 60 against, yeah. So not only does he score a lot of points, but he scores at the right games as when well. When they need to. When yeah. they need to. So yeah. I feel yeah. like he's just... Like, one of the greats, the GOATs. One yeah. of the GOATs, I think. What is something that you remembered about Kobe when you before he retired? I don't know if it's... Well, obviously, that, that last game was definitely the most memorable mm -hmm. for me, because... Yeah. Going out with the bang. It was, and I watched the game. Yeah, oh, that's so how basically. You know, I wasn't at yeah. all. I was like, Do you feel like that's how uh, Kobe? Uh, that's how everyone would have thought. With he, he would play his last game, because he scored sixty. <laughs> I wasn't expecting sixty, but I knew yeah. like he was gonna end his legacy on a high note for sure. Just yeah. the way he is and his mentality. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. how it was gonna go. Exactly. Mama mentality. What was yeah. this thing before? What was this thing? That you I have not. What, the, was that? the triangle, but then beyond the triangle. Oh. The Kobe uh, system. Right? The Kobe system. The Kobe system. system. Yeah. <laughs> He's the only guy <laughs> that could get away with the Kobe system. Uh, like, there's no Harden um, system. My question you know. is to you guys, how would you rank him in terms of the, um, of the greatest shooting guards of all time? Where would you rank him? Maybe, you know, and of course, there's Michael there. But where would you rank him anywhere in that line? Um, hmm. Is there anyone else in your mind that would be? You no, know? I don't think so. As, aside from yeah. Michael, I think yeah. like he's one. He's he's up there yeah. because he's just like I'm a fan of hard work. I know you said yeah. you you love hard work, and Kobe was the epitome of hard work. Work All ethic. This, uh, work ethic. The tells. stories not yeah. only has he been talented, but yeah. like the stories of people always praising him for his mm -hmm. hard work, and just you see it on the court, and just his like locked in mentality and his like. When you see him give interviews, he's very well spoken. Mm -hmm. He's very focused on every single game. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's no one that comes close to him. Yeah. Like it's either Michael or Kobe at this point. LeBron, uh, like he plays a different it's, position. Plays a That's different why position. I want to hear like the shooting guard. Kobe, I think Kobe right now is. Um, yeah. So Michael, closest, yeah. and then we got Kobe right there, right? Yeah. Who do you right. think? Because you're the mm -hmm. historian. Well, you got to look at not just like. Uh, the position because if you look at a shooting guard that's the main purpose is to score and that's what Michael basically um, you know uh, he symbolizes what a shooting guard is and, and Kobe was the one the closest to ever really get there mm -hmm. and not only in the scoring uh, scoring and statistic wise but also in the titles because Michael had six Kobe had five right so it's it's, it's really close in there and I think he, he is the second uh, shooting guard out there beside, beside Michael. Mm -hmm. right? But let's get into um, another issue that I want to hear about. You guys know, the more recent issue, mm -hmm. because we know that Kobe is a legend and he deserved to be, have his jersey retired. But like two jerseys? I don't, would you, I don't know. Two jerseys, mm -hmm. are they allowed to do that? It's it's tough because he won. <laughs> he won. He won. Like, why do you why do you give? It was a tough decision. Another good person comes and he's eight. Like, come on. Like, two I, I think I will. Like, it's been argued that he's one of the greatest Lakers of all time because the fact that he played twenty seasons for them. Yeah. And and he won three titles with the uh, number eight jersey with Shaq, and he won two with Pau Gasol and Bynum. So uh, it's hard for them to really see. But you know, everybody's been saying, even Shaq saying that he's the greatest Laker of all time. Even Magic saying mm. he's the greatest Laker of all time. So for them, really, to have that kind of, you know, special uh, retirement for him or two jersey of, uh, of his gets retired, I think it felt right for a lot of people. 
So and, and yeah. I, can, I, yeah. I can understand yeah. it because he won basically almost the same amount in both. And he was pretty consistent on his both of his career because he played 10 years at 8 and 10 years at 24. So I'm just saying two jerseys seems a bit too much to me. <laughs> well, that is, that is Kobe. He, is, yeah, he was if, too much. If he's the, if he's the, if yeah. the, if he's the only, like, if someone were to retire two jerseys, Kobe would, would be, be Co Kobe. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's go to a more recent issue, which okay. is the, the OKC right now. I mm. want to hear what you guys have thought about the OKC Thunder right now, about what's going on in the team. Uh, do you think that they should keep going or, they, or do you think it's something that they should kind of break up right now? I don't know. I, I remember you were, you were kind of uh, displeasured about the yeah. OKC. About a certain player, <laughs> about OKC. Who is that? Well, I feel like when Melo's involved, things just don't gel properly. Mm. Yeah. Like for every team, obviously, if you continue to play together, yeah. you're going to eventually get chemistry. But just the way they are, I don't think they need that many people who need the ball. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? mm -hmm. Could you also say the same thing with Westbrook? Because Westbrook played with superstars before James Harden, uh, Kevin Durant, Serge Ibaka. He had you know, Reggie Jackson, even you know, to a smaller uh, uh, sample size. But could you say the same thing to him? That he's as good of a player as Carmelo was in terms of you know, potential and scoring and being able to do a lot of things, but just to win a champ, to win games, to win, you know, to be a championship contender, maybe they're not the kind of player that you want to be surrounded with? Um, I would choose, I would choose Westbrook over yeah. Melo. <laughs> I, think, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, I think you were, you're, I think you're blaming Melo, right? You think yeah, Melo should sit down. I think, yeah, I think they need, they need Westbrook more than they need Melo. I feel like you should let go of Melo. Like, I, I totally Yeah, agree I was not saying let go of uh, Westbrook because they signed him with yeah. a big ass contract. <laughs> So you can't really let go of someone of that. And but they I'm know just thinking go of around. like, what do they need to do now? Like, yeah. I feel like exactly there's too many people with egos that may need the ball. Like Melo's, mm. Melo's obviously acting all the time when he doesn't get the ball. I've yeah. watched some OKC games yeah. where they try to run the offense. Melo doesn't get the ball, and he's like, "So do you think they should they should have him come off the bench? Maybe I feel, that's I a feel like I feel like they should. Yeah, or." I don't do you know. feel like they have the coaching? Uh, they have someone. Uh, I know Billy Donovan been, has been questioned about, you know, trying to have. Does he have enough of respect from teammates like that to say, "Hey, come off the bench, well, Because Dwayne Wade, he had to really uh, to, for Dwayne Wade to do that. He was the one that volunteered, "Hey, I want to come off the bench." Whereas Melo, when he was asked the question, he kind of like shrugged it off and laughed at it. I know they're kind of on a good winning streak in the past few days now, but do you think this is sustainable? This is something that they should, um, you know. I don't know. I think it's just the personnel issue. Like, mm -hmm. Melo's not yeah. a person to do that. I can't mm -hmm. see Melo saying, like, oh, go off. I'll come off the bench, guys. Mm -hmm. Like, he's not the type to do that. Yeah. So, um, whether or not Billy Donovan can figure this out, I think OKC's in, yeah. in hot and troubled water. Yeah. <laughs> how, about, how about the other player that's nobody really has been, you know, which I've, I felt that he, was, he is the best player that they could, uh, in terms of two-way player. What about Paul George? What should they do with Paul George? Because... Um, if they don't do anything before the trade day deadline and this doesn't really work out, they basically are going to have someone who is a one-year rental and could leave OKC and they basically would get nothing back from him, which is what happened with KD. So what should they do with, with, with Paul George? Should they make a move sooner or later or, or let it ride till the end and have him leave for nothing? I don't know. I think they should uh, trade Paul George while they have the chance. Yeah, I, think the experiments, I think the experiment's done. Yeah. I think it's not working. I think it's just because Westbrook... I, I'm just going to blame Westbrook. Yeah. I think Westbrook can't play with anyone. <laughs> I said just, just blow up the team again yeah. and just like get what you can with the pieces you have because obviously you've dealt a good person out of there. Yeah, they, they traded all the depot and <laughs> so now it's like, like yeah. A lot of people have been saying like every time a, person, a player leaves Westbrook, all of a better? sudden they just like boom. Like if you guys want, the first person that left him was uh, <laughs> the first person that left him was KD and he won a title. Well, like yeah. uh, the second one was James Harden. The moment he left OKC, he's an MVP candidate and like now the Rockets are playing well. Mm. And then now the Oladipo left and Sabonis, even Sabonis. I mean, on a smaller sample, they left OKC, they left Westbrook, and all of a sudden, Indiana's playing well. Yeah. And then Victor Oladipo is an All Star. Well, I don't know. I don't. Yeah, it's it's trouble water. I think. I, I think OKC it's hard, is done. It's I hard to OC... yeah. It's hard to put a blame on Westbrook, but like it's it's the kind of game, maybe the kind of game that he plays. Do you guys maybe think that we can compare him on a smaller sample size to maybe Allen Iverson, because Allen Iverson was a fun you know fun to watch, electrifying to watch, but really like 
he couldn't really get past, you know, because it's hard to have, to, it's hard to surround him with any player because the fact that he needs the ball in his hands all the time. Do you guys yeah, feel I think, like... I think, I think he's an Allen, like an Allen Iverson type of player. And Kobe like too in terms of mentality. Yeah, yeah. mentality wise, right. right? Well, I, <laughs> that's all we could talk about. I didn't want to drown in sadness with OKC. <laughs> what a way to end <laughs> the show. But hey, um, uh, the show is coming to an end. So anything you'd like to shout out before we we leave? I just want to give shout out to our fans, who are you know a lot of people that have you know been supportive on us on Facebook and Instagram. They've been really good and watch our full shows on YouTube. You guys have been awesome. Great. Uh, Matthew, anything you'd like to shout out? Any people that you'd like to thank? Um, shout out, you know, my family, my little bro, older bro, mom, dad, and sister, and shout out my girl, Christine. Okay. Hey, uh, everyone, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you always watch our show. Comment if you have any opinions, or hey, if you have a mixtape, send it to us. You never know, maybe you might get on the show too. Who knows? Stay tuned, guys. Stay balling.